Aha, hello. Walk around my house and turn on all the lights. Since my family, I hope, has gone to bed. Ooh, it's real dark in here. Huh? Look, they're all gone. <laughs> Just like you to see what reality looks like in the wood house. A little sneak peek. There's uh, an alligator, an alligator head. I did not kill this alligator. I bought this at a thrift shop in Gates County. See? That's how I felt last night at the um, Lieutenant Governor debate. I felt like I had my head in his mouth. You look great. Are you still doing Optavia? That would be a no. I mean, I have all the crap that I'm supposed to be eating in my pantry, but I have not done that because I cannot be healthy under stress. It's a real problem for me, clearly. So no, I'm currently just sitting around drinking a bunch of sugar and Gonna have a little dinner here. Ha ha, Smith's red and white collards. Yum, yum, yum. So, oh, I love when I get all these people invested in listening because they think I'm gonna tell them some. I'm back home. I got home tonight at 7:30. I've been in an intensive speaker training in Raleigh with Alan Hoffler. If you ever speak in front of people, I'm gonna stand up to show you my tricks. You look at people in the eyes when you speak. That helps you to omit words like, uh, mm, okay, ah. Uh, if you're looking at someone, somehow you don't do those words. When you use gestures, it makes your words louder. It's the damnedest thing I've ever heard. I learned so much from Alan Hoffler. He has a company called Mills Wick. He does this training four times a year in Cary. He travels all over the world, all over the country. I highly recommend this training. Two days, likely the best use of my time on record. Very excited about my TEDx talk. He is my speaker coach. So helpful. Yes, I'm gonna give Lori my hairdresser all my tricks. You need to blink, otherwise it looks intense. Alan, you didn't talk to me about blinking. Mainly about standing, you keep your feet a credit card length apart, you use gestures, you can use notes, but again, you're never reading while you're talking. You read and then you talk. Just giving you all a little blip. Please sign up for his class so that he knows I'm a big fan of his. Don't worry, I'm not getting any money from him. Though, maybe he'll let me teach someday if I ever learn how to do it properly. I'm gonna try to get this stand up. I should talk. Ah. I should speak standing up because it would be more powerful. So, you never say the word so. There, I've already messed that up. I was at the speaking conference in Cary where two days. Last night, I left Carrie. Bought some trains on Craigslist for Amos for Christmas. Headed straight to Nash Community College, where the mm -hmm. time out. If you've never had cold collards, you haven't lived. Dorches, Smith's Red and White. Again, they pay me nothing, but they are so good. Highly recommend it. One more bite. Okay. Now, last night I go to the Lieutenant Governor debate. I think to myself, this is a great use of my time. I'm just going to tell y'all. 
I'm really not that into politics. I've run out of Gatorade's here, and now I'm into organic juice boxes. I do like politics now more because I under, oh, the cat just bit me. I understand more why they're so important. You think you're a Republican or you're a Democrat. You have these views that you believe, right? Most of us come to the table with a lot of baggage. Our own upbringing, for instance. What kind of rhetoric did you hear growing up? It makes a big difference. When I started blogging, I naturally started talking about education. I identified as a Republican. I thought I knew things or believed things. As I learned and looked at research, I started coming up with my own opinions. Really important. Am I still a Republican? I am when it comes to paying taxes. The harder I work, the more taxes I pay. Me don't like that. Am I, ah, a damn cat bit me again. Am I Republican when it comes to school choice? No, this is a problem for me. So last night, I'm gonna give you a rendition. If you're not from North Carolina, you might think this is boring, but I think this is could be applicable to wherever you live. You have got to go to debates and things like this. You have to ask hard questions. Last night at the debate, there were five or six people there speaking. I'll tell you exactly what my thoughts are on this whole thing. And we'll get to Mark Johnson, who was the reason I really went. So our current North Carolina State Superintendent has decided he's gonna run for Lieutenant Governor. Interesting. Several politicians there, clearly. They've decided they're politicians. One woman, all men. Deborah Cochran is the woman. She's from Mount Pilot. She's the mayor. Interesting. She lowered property taxes by 30%. You think, that's kind of great. Sort of like that. She's a woman. Not women like women. They ask a question about school choice. Melissa, if you were a supporter, you would have heard a lot of this yesterday because supporters get the scoop and the rest of the world does not. Anyway, Deborah Cochran, they say, what do you think about school choice? Her answer is, I think all parents should be able to choose whatever education they want for their children. If you are out there saying, well, I agree with that, wonderful. Does anyone actually not agree with that? The real question is not do you agree if you should be able to decide where your children go to school. I hope everyone agrees with that because they're Americans. The real question is, do you think the state of North Carolina should pay for wherever you want your children to go to school? That's the real question. It's interesting to me that Democrat, that Republicans really feel the strong connectivity to we should not pay for other people's issues. We don't want to expand Medicaid. When it comes to school choice, suddenly though, we should have school choice. It doesn't make sense to me. Deborah Cochran said, school choice. Uh, there's another candidate named Greg Gephardt. Now he was probably my favorite because of his story. His story is he was raised by a single mother in a trailer that's a good story. I've been in speaker training. You need a good story. Went to West Point, again, served in Afghanistan. Three little girls, works in Holly Springs. I liked him. I thought, that's a great story. He also worked for David Lewis. That's the backstory. He didn't bring that up. And he's a lobbyist for some solar companies. I have a lot of opinions about solar companies. I don't know if this is a Democrat or a Republican thing. My husband, as a criminal defense attorney, has actually defended several families whose land um, solar companies have tried to take. My husband, I would say, is the solar company lawyer expert in the state. He knows so much, and I've learned a lot from him. Solar companies are not your friend. In my mind, they're like charter schools. The families that choose charter schools, they are your friends. The charter schools are not your friends. People that wanna sell their land to the solar company, 
no harm done with them. The solar companies in North Carolina do not have to pay tax. Blue Cross Blue Shield is the largest owner of solar companies in the state of North Carolina. Why do they want to own solar companies? Ask the question. You take farmland out of production, you throw a bunch of solar panels on it, then you have runoff that dilutes and ruins the drinking water in the area. It's a problem. It's a problem. I'm not a big fan of solar companies, clearly. We also had a candidate named Mark Robinson, the only African-American candidate that was on stage last night. He was the best speaker by far, purely speaking ability. He was a big guy, probably 6'4", six, 6'5", six, big in size, booming voice, very strong message. He really made you listen. Great speaker. Will he win? I don't think so. He's African-American, extremely conservative. Who are the people that are going to vote for him? Any different than the several white men that are extremely conservative. Women might vote for women. I'm trying to think, who, who is he going to pull from? Interesting. He claims, or he says, school choice, again, is important. No Medicaid expansion. This no Medicaid expansion is really curious to me. Thomas, my husband, already lectured me. You better not talk about Medicaid expansion because you don't know enough about it. You're absolutely right. I do not know enough about it. I will not pretend that I do. Nor do I have four days to get educated in Medicaid expansion. I'm giving a TEDx talk. That is where my time is going to be. And with my children, who I have not seen in five days. I will tell you one thing, though that you might not have known. I wouldn't have known myself. Amos gets Medicaid. Medicaid pays for speech therapy, occupational therapy at school, public school systems. We are on the wait list for Medicaid, not CAP-C, for the innovations waiver. We have been on the wait list now for three years. We have about five more years to go. If you sign up today, the wait list is about 10 years. So Deborah Cochran said, I do not believe in Medicaid expansion, but I think we should take care of the disabled. You can't have it both ways. How are you going to take care of Amos without Medicaid expansion? How is my family going to benefit from Medicaid with no expansion, right? So my trouble is, when a candidate says something like that, I feel concerned, I feel confused, I feel a little annoyed that I'm not running because I think, wow, I know these topics better than they do. Not all of them, but right many. Medicaid expansion and school choice were the biggest ones. Every single candidate said school choice. Buddy Bengal, he's from New Bern, very likable, owns several restaurants. His mother was mayor in New Bern. After the hurricane, he fed 10,000 people, really is a part of the community, and I think willing to talk to people across the aisle. I liked him a lot. He kind of reminded me of Buddy the Elf, which he laughed and said, yes, I know, people have told me that before. Good sense of humor. I like sense of humor. Scott Stone is from Charlotte. He is the most polished of all the candidates. The reason he is the most polished is because he has been a politician the longest. He stopped and spoke to me very, very smooth. Smooth gets votes. We're just being totally objective here. I've been in speaker training. I'm watching people. So we've got Mark Robinson, by far the best speaker. We've got Scott Stone, most polished politician. Greg Gephardt, best story. Buddy Bingle, Eastern North Carolina. I love that. Deborah Cochran, the only woman. John Ritter. 
John Ritter is nice. He's an attorney. He lives in a small county. His message did not push me over the edge. I wanted him to have speaker training. I'm not trying to be judgy. One of the questions was, what have you done for your community? He really went on about how he had helped his clients. In my mind, that's not community, that's a job. He also said he played the organ in his church. Again, I don't know if I'd list that as community, but that's just me. Mark Johnson was also one of the candidates. And as I said to him last night, you were not the worst. I can't remember his response. I think he sort of laughed. I didn't mean it in a mean way, but he was not the worst. He is strong. He's a politician. He's smart. He's articulate. He has a rebuttal for everything that you say. I feel like I'm fairly sharp. I've never been the smartest person in the room. I was firing questions at him and he was firing answers back at me. Really pissed at me for calling him Hitler. He broke out of the gate with that. It was in a group of people. I can't believe you called me Hitler. I said, I didn't call you Hitler. I said, you reminded me of Hitler. Clearly, I don't think you're Hitler. You didn't exterminate six million Jewish people. That's horrible. Acted like Hitler. Thank you, Janie. I said, I really think when I got annoyed with you is when you never fired Kim Martin as head of school safety. My children are in public school. I want them safe. I point out to you that you have a leader who is doing nothing in terms of school safety, and it worries me. Well, I have a new head of safer schools. That's fine, but you didn't get rid of the one that was no good. I don't like that. He said, it really pissed me off, or didn't say pissed me off. That's my words. You said I hated pre-K. I don't remember saying he hated pre-K. I stood there with Jim Goodnight to support pre-K, and you said I hated it. That was a lie. The reason I feel like he has not supported pre-K, well, there's several reasons. One, I don't hear him talk about pre-K that much, personally. Two, the summer before last, the General Assembly got a chunk of change from the federal government. They got, I think, $75 million dollars for early childhood. They took 50 million of that and put it in another account. They then used that money for something else. The General Assembly made this decision. He said, I'm not in the General Assembly. I didn't make the decision. True, point taken. Where were you? Why didn't I see a picture of you lying across the desk of people in the General Assembly saying, no, you're not effing taking that money that is going to pre-k fight fight for pre-k he said well media chooses what to show and what not to show i said well the news and observer loves you he was like oh my gosh i don't know what you're reading i said well the charlotte paper doesn't but the news and observer does love you why didn't he advocate for the money that was exactly my thought We continued the conversation and several people have really been incensed that I would have a conversation with him. I will tell you, at some point, he's not gonna be superintendent anymore, which I think is good. And I told him that. I, I wondered why he wasn't running again. If he's so proud of what he's accomplished, why doesn't he run again? But he feels like he can do more work in the Lieutenant Governor position. Well, the budget for state superintendent, I don't know if anybody knows this, because a senator told me this last week, is $9 billion. That's a lot of money. The budget for the Lieutenant Governor is about 800000 between eight and 900000 You do have a position, a seat on the state board, and you get to vote. You have the winning vote for the Senate if there's a tie. That hasn't happened in years. His biggest point was, why didn't the prior administration spend this $15 million that was sitting there in Read to Achieve? I didn't have an answer, right? I didn't know. So last night and this morning, I tried to get some answers, and I think I got some. One of the best answers 
I received Justin Parman or Stu Egan. They write caffeinated rage, notes from the chalkboard, very informed, give me lots of information. Amy Jablonski is terribly informed. She was running for superintendent. Now she's supporting Jen Mangrum, who obviously is my choice for superintendent. June Ackeson, that money was in a fund for Re to achieve. No one before Mark Johnson had the power that Mark Johnson does to spend money in the way that he has. He has been given full authority, and he said last night, I fought the state board. He fought the state board. That doesn't feel like a positive thing to me. I like the State Board of Education. I think there's some great people on it. People that are really working hard for no reason other than the fact that they care about education. I really like that and think it's important. He believes in school choice. When the state superintendent believes in school choice, we should be concerned. Your whole job is to support public education. And I realize charter schools are public schools. I would ask you, when you think about school choice, I want you to think about, is it a choice or is it not a choice? I live in Eastern North Carolina. I have Amos, he has special needs. North Carolina offers three voucher programs, three. One is the Opportunity Scholarship Program. You get between 45 and 5,500 if you want your child to be able to go to private school. In Eastern North Carolina, you can go to the private school where my daughter goes for that amount. It's very rare. If you live in Raleigh, you take the Opportunity Scholarship. You're a low-income family and you wanna to go to St. David's. Maybe it's 18,000. Low-income families actually aren't gonna be able to utilize the Opportunity Scholarship because they don't have the additional 10 to 20,000 to pay the tuition. The educational savings account is particularly allowed for children with special needs, $9,000. If Adrian wants to move Amos to a private school of her choice, now don't forget there are none, there are no private schools in my area that would serve Amos. So this is all just a pipe dream. I get 9,000 from the state of North Carolina, fine. In addition, the third program is for families of children with disabilities. That's another 8,000, that's 17,000. I'm not low income, but if my family was, were, I'm never sure, that would be 4,500. $21,500 is on top of Amos's head. In my public school district, in North Carolina, the average per pupil is $9,700. For a minute, let's think about Amos has an IEP, so he probably gets another 3,000. Let's say four, just to make things fun, 14,000. If I move Amos to a private school, North Carolina is gonna give me 17,000. If I have a school choice, if you really believe in school choice, shouldn't I be able to take that whole $17,000 and give it to the public school where Amos is? I think so. If you really believe in school choice, if I were low income, shouldn't I get that $21,500 and give it to the public school system? It doesn't make sense to me. I said this last night to Buddy Bengal. I said it to Mark Johnson. I said it to Greg Gephardt. Mark Johnson didn't have an answer. His answer was, I need to look and see exactly what your district gets for kids with disabilities. And I said, no, you don't. You don't need to look. We know it's not 21,500. We know that. It is not. There's no reason to look. You support school choice. Why shouldn't I get that money? He, I believe, said, you're right, you should. I said, well, no, I shouldn't. I don't think that it's the state's responsibility to educate Amos. All these Republicans are telling me it is not our responsibility. We're not doing Medicaid expansion. 
But then it's our responsibility to educate people's children wherever they like. We have public transportation, buses, maybe you live somewhere that has trains, the metro, public transportation. If you don't like public transportation, the state does not subsidize a car for you. Buy your own car. Public school is here. We wanna make it the best and the strongest that we can with money. If there is 21,500 for someone in a private school, it should be available at a public school. Can you imagine if every child in Chowan County got 17,000? If 60%, 60 to 70% of our kids are in poverty and 60 to 70% of our population got $21,500? might be a good conversation to have with your superintendent. What would that money mean to you? Can you imagine the positions that you could have? What you could offer? Instead, we're piecing out all this money. This is not Survivor. You're not on an island. There's not one bar of chocolate. Everybody gets a teeny tiny bite. This is not like that. It is not like that. Again, I would never blame a parent that makes a choice. I have very dear friends who have children in charter schools. I liken it to my arm is broken. It's terrible. The bone is sticking out. I've got to have a sling. Yes, we're getting you a sling. But at some point, we have to set my arm. We have to set our arms. I cannot listen to people talk to me about school choice that don't have answers to those questions. Look into Michigan. Spend time looking at what's happened to Michigan. Today in my speaker conference, this young man sitting near me started talking about Michigan and what, it, what had happened in his home state because of charter schools. Very interesting. Kathy Perry has a question. If I'm using the Opportunity Scholarship for my child to attend private school, where does that money come from? Taxpayers, correct. Exactly, Kathy. That is state money. That is state money. I guess I was overall disappointed that the candidates didn't know those facts because to me, if I'm gonna be an expert or I'm gonna run for office, you better know these things. I was disappointed that our own state superintendent hadn't ever really thought about that. I think it's really important to think about that. We should know it, especially when you're the superintendent. I think Mark Johnson is nice. I think he's funny. He didn't want to take a picture with me. He said he didn't trust me. I said, really, you don't trust me? He said, no. I said, fine, don't take a picture. We took a picture. I put something funny with it. I'm not gonna write anything mean. There's no benefit to that. At some point, we have to come to the table and we have to have a discussion. So whether any of those candidates become our next Lieutenant Governor, I want them to remember Adrienne Wood came, she asked me some hard questions. And you know what, I'd like to listen to her because I have more to learn. And that was one thing about Buddy Bingle really stood out. He was ready to learn. Last night, Amber, Buddy Bingle talked about the lottery money and how that money should work. I've never spent any time on the lottery, so I really can't tell you how it works. I'd like to say that I had, maybe that'll be a January task, but it has not been thus far. My plan next, I hope, is to go to a lieutenant governor primary with the Democratic Party. I'd like to hear what those people have to say. I think it would be interesting. I hope there's one nearby with me. I do have a suggestion though. I believe that we should have another debate with our Republican candidates and have all veteran teachers come up with the questions and ask the questions. I just think that would be really interesting. Education really matters. And if you're gonna have someone sit on the State Board of Education, we need to know what they're thinking. Teachers are wonderful people to ask questions when it comes to education and when it comes to leadership. They can tell you a lot of what you need to know. Teachers are probably ahead of us in learning and knowing. I spoke to an administrator in my school district this morning who shared with me that the 
superintendent candidates had done a talk yesterday morning. And he said, Jen Mangrum was at the top of the list. Michael Mayer did well too. Absolutely hands down, great here. Well, I also heard, I had four messages last night, four. I'd been in speaker training all day, had no time to check messages, no time to really do anything. So I'd had this conversation with Mark Johnson. I'm really kind of feeling proud of myself, giving him a chance. You know, I really want to listen and learn. I get these four messages from four different school districts. There was the North Carolina School Board Association big meeting yesterday morning. And as an aside, I would just like to congratulate the Eden Tenchoan School Board won the award for 2019 out of, we have 100 districts, I think we have 110 school systems maybe. We won for excellence. Go Edenton. Again, we have a great school system and we have wonderful school board members. I guarantee you, if you call them, they will answer the phone and talk to you and spend time thinking and listening. I really think it's great. These messages, 115, thank you, Kathy. These messages say, Mark Johnson spoke about you in the meeting yesterday morning. What? What do you mean? Why would Adrian have anything to do with the North Carolina School Board Association? Adrian's not on the school board. No, she's not. This person says, he didn't mention you by name, he was speaking, I believe, about the kindness campaign, which I told him last night, I think is ridiculous. If we need to have a kindness campaign, do we need to have a kindness campaign? I, I find that silly. Would a kindness campaign actually help people be kind? How about practice what you preach? A blogger in North Carolina called me Hitler, is what he said. I guess is an antithesis of the kindness campaign. So my question is, one, it explains why he came out of the gate mad that I called him Hitler, which I didn't. And two, if you're gonna be kind, are you gonna call out a member of a community whose school board is winning the award for the whole state and put her down? Is that kind? I don't think so. I don't think so. It really disappointed me. Truthfully, it hurt my feelings. I thought he had to have a lot of balls to talk to me last night, knowing that he said in front of hundreds of people that he put me down. I, I, I don't like that. I don't like that. Maybe he feels like that's what I've done to him. If you're gonna talk about kindness, talk about kindness. If you want children to walk in the halls, we don't say, don't run, don't run, don't run. We say walk. You don't need to use a story and put somebody down to lift up your agenda. And I'm not gonna put him down to lift up my agenda. I told him last night, I am going to write about your actions. I station, amplify. I don't like what's happened there. I. I really have some real concerns about decisions that have been made at DPI. I don't like the iPad discussions. He told me I was allowed to buy the iPads. I believe all that. But at the end of the day, I think teachers should choose where their money goes. If the General Assembly said, you have the money to buy devices, then go fight with the General Assembly. If you work so well with the General Assembly, then say no. We're not doing this. We're not doing this. This is not what teachers need. There was a conversation last night. He, he talked about Deep State and Stu Egan wrote it in his blog today. Deep State is this new like Trump term, I think. The establishment, Deep State. I don't wanna hear anyone using words like that because it makes me think that you watch too much C-SPAN. So note to self, any politicians out there, Go ahead and eradicate those words from your vocabulary because you sound like posers. Deep state is a term that applies to immigrants who have fled countries 
and really are escaping oppression. So when you talk about you're escaping deep state in North Carolina, what? You can't be. And there are several people doing that. That's asinine. It's not accurate. It's not accurate. As a teacher, I am sick and tired of having things thrown at me that I never asked for. Most of us are drowning in what doesn't benefit kids or classrooms. Our superintendent really believes he has done a lot. He truly believes it. I, I don't see what he sees as being a lot, but we both have different priorities, right? My priorities are pre-K and families in Eastern North Carolina and teachers. He believes, wow, we've gotten rid of testing. I don't really see that. I don't think I station is the best thing to do with young children. I don't like how iStation was chosen when the Amplify RFP, and that gets a little bit too detailed probably for most people here. Um, it was sketchy as hell to me. I believe it was sketchy as hell. You cannot convince me otherwise. I've spoken to people that are too smart, incredible educators that understand the process way better than I do, and I have to trust their interpretations over my own. Follow the money, Janie says. If you work with the General Assembly and you're the state superintendent, you need to work with the General Assembly. I hope that I see you fighting for me. Jen Mangrum gets elected. She may not have much luck. June Atkinson's hands were tied. It's true. Will that happen again? I don't know. At the end of the day, will I feel like someone is fighting for what's right and listening to teachers? I do believe she will. Mark Johnson's not running for state superintendent anymore. His name is not a topic in the race. He's out. He's running for lieutenant governor. It is going to be very difficult to get your name on the ballot for the primary. After last night, I think he has a chance. Only because the other candidates were horrifying in my mind. I don't know the Democratic candidates. I'm really curious to meet them and hear, and not all the candidates for last night. Again, I hope I've pointed out the good parts of them. I would encourage candidates to one, go to speaker training with Alan Hoffler, Mills Wit Communications. Get your speaker training done because most of you people other than Mark Robinson need help. Just like to say that. Two, learn your information. And people out there that aren't running for politics and they don't like politics and they don't want to talk about politics, do your research. Ask questions. The stuff that I just espoused to you, I looked up online. It's very easy to find out this information. If you have a question, send it to me. If I have a second, I'll look it up. If not, I'll ask somebody that that does know. Last night I called Justin Parmenter and said, hey, I have a question. Can you explain this to me? Mark Johnson told me that the innovative school district was no longer. I said to Justin, is that true? He said, well, actually there was a meeting. They're not going to add any schools to it, but it has not been dissipated. That's the word. It is still there. Maybe Mark meant it was going away. These are things, if we don't know the answer, we can ask someone else. I'm glad to know that he supports the innovative school district going away. I think as a human being and a North Carolinian, we want more from our politicians. We want people to say, I'm sorry. Hell, I want the weatherman to say, I'm sorry. When he tells me it's going to snow and it doesn't snow, I'm pissed. Say you're sorry. I want Mark Johnson to write an op-ed and say, the innovative school district was the dumbest idea on the planet. We were idiots and it's dumb. I like you when you say things like that. I guess my whole message and what I talk about is transparency and being honest and sharing the truth. And I found personally that people love that and they connect to you. Maybe you have to have confidence. Maybe you have to be willing to jump off the cliff a little bit, people gravitate towards truth. 
Say you're sorry. Say it's wrong. People like you better. That's a real struggle for a lot of people. It's a real struggle. The glossy flyers. I did say last night to him at the end, we had taken the picture and we were laughing and talking because again, you have to be able to have a conversation with someone if you want change. You have to. It's a rule. It's a rule by Adrian. I said, I'm going to give you a piece of free advice. I'm not a campaign manager. I don't work at DPI. Just a blogger, a mom with an alligator head in her living room. Stop sending out the glossy flyers. It makes people hate you. I said it exactly like that. He said, we have to disseminate information to parents, and he's walking away. It's very conversational. We're not fighting. I said, people hate you. They hate you when you do that. I'm getting a letter from my school saying, we need Band-Aids and paper, and you're sending out glossy flyers. They're not sending them home. Teachers are building towers. They're doing science experiments. They are jealous of you and all that ink that you have right at your disposal. They hate it. Send out a piece of crap, piece of paper with one thing on it. And that's how we ended it. I think it ended well. I'm sure he'll watch this video or some of his people will, Erica or Chloe or somebody, and will point out all the mean things I said. But I hope they don't feel like that. I hope the next time I see him, he says, you know what? Thank you for your conversation. You helped me think. I'm going to learn to apologize a little bit more. I'm going to fight for children more. I'm going to lay down in front of the General Assembly, and I'm going to tell Berger to kiss my ass and that we need assistant teachers. We need people to do things like that. We do. The postage cost alone is horrifying. That is a really good point, Amber. Maybe, oh shit, I got this, that, oh. I thought that was collards. We have to connect with people. You're never supposed to eat on video. When you have to put aside ego to admit truth, most politicians have significant egos. Not all, but most. I think so. I guess that's how you get there. I mean, I'm not allowed to run for something. I have no experience. I have common sense. I think you need more than that. What I saw last night was the person with the most money is going to win. That's what happens. Amber said it's called free fundraising and giving his face and name out there for lieutenant governor. You're exactly right, Amber. Jen Magram said, I'm not a politician. I'm a public servant. I think that is very true, and I think it's truthful for you to say that. I don't think many people could say that. One of the questions last night was, what have you done for your community? One person played the organ at his church. Mark Robinson raised strong children. Again, great thing. I don't know if that's for community, but it's a start. Greg Gephardt said, it's not me, it's we. What have we done for our community? It's like, no, no, that's not the question. It's not about, he said his wife had done a lot for the community because he went away with work and military and she had to stay home and handle all these things during the hurricane. Again, I think that's great. I want to hear about what have we done for community? I will say Greg Gephardt is PTA president and I really do like that. But when women are PTA presidents, we get no credit. It's like being a Sunday school teacher. You have to do it. You have no choice. It's your lot in life. If men teach Sunday school, oh, you're amazing. I mean, a male PTA president, he's probably the most popular person on the planet. I'm like imagining my husband as PTA president. That would really be actually 
quite entertaining. Anyway, I'm going to put this mattress somewhere because I live in a house with a mattress on the floor in the living room. I have an alligator head. But look, I have a swan. And don't anybody write me any messages about how I kill animals. I don't. I go to thrift shops and I buy stuffed animals because they're intriguing to me. Anyway, that's all I got, people. Supporters, I'll see you in the morning. For those of you who don't have $5, I'm sorry that you don't have $5. I charge $5 for insider videos. Usually that involve my family. They're very fun. You're under no pressure to join. The same way you're under no pressure to pay once you've read your three free News and Observer articles a month. Do I want to pay? Yes. Do I pay? No. I'm unwilling to do it, so I get it. But what I do is go on Google and get information somewhere else. You'll never get this anywhere else. Never. It's all a secret. Oh, I made my crib mattress into a reading nook. Amos just wallows around in here. Amos is doing well. He missed me so much. I got home. He gave me the biggest hug. And then he pointed out, what did he say? That there was a bunch of rubbish in here. Clearly, he's been watching too much Peppa Pig. He's now British. Mm -hmm. When your six-year-old uses the term rubbish, you've hit a new level of amazingness. I would just like to point that out. I have not quite a month until my TED Talk. I will be practicing. My supporters are going to have to listen to my practicing way more than they want to. Me using all my new gesture skills. And I'll look forward to talking to y'all. Yes, Lynn, I've missed y'all. My uncle died last, it's been a week ago. That's just been a hard road. It's It's been a really busy week. Hopefully it will slow down. I'll see my supporters in the morning, nine-ish. And thank you all for tuning in. I really appreciate everyone listening. I think it's important information to get to the world about politics and encouraging people to do your homework, ask questions, look up information. I tell you what, I had no idea that if you went to a debate, politicians were so willing to talk to you. It's fantastic. They might get in office and never call you back, but right now they are looking for votes. Go with your questions. My TEDx talk is at SAS and Cary on December 13th. It's a Friday morning. I'm speaking Friday afternoon. I hope it is awesome. I will work my ass off. I'm working my ass off. Too bad some of it actually doesn't come off. Mm. And then I will start Christmas preparation after that because then I cannot deal with a dry, thirsty Christmas tree in here while I try to get anything else done. Carry on, people.